In video 17 of this Keys of Magic series, I promised that I would eventually let you know what the primary relationships are for a magician. This is with the additional acknowledgement that there are unlimited ways of practicing magic, unlimited options of arts and methods you can choose to practice, affinities with various beings you can cultivate, and endless ways of expressing as a magician. Unlimited. So me saying there is a general way of doing it is almost untrue. <laughs> Nevertheless, video 17 is titled Magical Knowledge. I have taught you in this series that knowledge is not bits of trivia and description held in the brain. Knowledge is energy sharing and therefore power sharing. Knowledge is connecting with another being and therefore connecting into another being's magic so that you can also source it as your magic. This is done with respect, honor, submission, trust and trustworthiness and by consent. If you don't already have a chosen art or realized affinity, then I now offer to you a common affinity and relationship that a magician might have. And that is that a magician engages with the elements. A magician cultivates knowledge of elements. The elements may be framed in a few different ways. One frame would be the fire, air, water, earth elements. Another way would be the elements of the periodic table. Yes, the ones you learned in chemistry class. There may be other element frameworks, perhaps coming from cultural, ancestral, and indigenous ways of understanding the world. A magician might undertake engaging with all the elements and in combinations, or they might emphasize a relationship with one element, such as being a fire magician, or say, a silver magician. The reason that cultivating knowledge and relationship with the elements is primary for a magician is because the most simple statement of what a magician is, is one who creates world. And elements are literally the building blocks of the illusory and interactive layer of the earth world. Even if a magician has an affinity, art, or emphasis that is not particularly regarding an element, let's say they are a third eye magician or an adept loom weaver, often what a magician does have knowledge in is brought to bear upon the elements, after all, because calling appearance, appearance itself, is a configuration of the elements. Thus, any magic or power the magician channels is going to have effect on the elements to invite the elements to configure into the called appearance. Recall that the first step for a novice magician in practicing their art is to greet and submit to the master of the art. Thus, if you are ready to engage with the elements, I encourage you to greet and submit. It's okay if you don't know their language yet. In fact, I will not be teaching you their language. A bit, I might. But if you are truly going to dedicate to the art of the elements, the elements will teach you their language themselves. I once did something that you might like trying. It, is, it also might give you a focus for your formal greeting and submission. I went to a dollar store and bought four plain white soap dishes. In one dish I placed water. In one dish I placed a little soil or earth. In one dish I placed kindling and lit fire or you can, uh, you know, like a little tea light. And in the last dish, it seemed empty, but it was my dish for air. 
Even making some simple observations, I began to learn the languages. Earth did not need attention, it simply was, for all time. Water evaporated and had to be renewed every few days. Fire required a medium and needed renewing often or to leave it unlit for times. Air also required no attention. It simply existed, even without me doing anything to put it there, as I had done with the earth. If you would like to do this simple setup of the four dishes, you can give your submission before it, or you can simply greet from where you are. Master Earth, Master Water, Master Fire, Master Air, I greet you in peace. I offer myself as your child and servant, and am gratefully and humbly ready to receive the wisdom you are willing to give. After greeting, be ready with your hearing and your observing, especially during your village exploration times, to be met and instructed and given bidding by earth, water, fire, and air, or whatever element or elements you have chosen. You may also want to find mentors, human mentors, that work with the elements you want to work with. These mentors don't have to identify as magicians, but if you find a mentor that is in love with an element, they will love to show an attentive student everything they know. You may wish to read stories, history, and technical information about your chosen element or elements. This is all in a spirit of receiving, not of doing anything yet. By the way, as a novice, you will be clearing or purifying, as well as remaining observant and receiving from your ground state of emptiness or neutrality. There is no doing magic as such yet. A novice has not heard enough to yet speak. I'll see you in the next video.